Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will talk about the rest of the three quantum numbers. Previously we talked about the quantum number, the principal quantum number, and we knew that this quantum number represents the number of energy levels in an atom. And we said that each energy level contains secondary energy level and the number of these secondary energy levels is called the subsidiary quantum numbers and subsidiary means secondary so the um, the subsidiary quantum number we refer to as a small l we have four subsidiary quantum numbers so, the number of subsidiary quantum numbers, or the number of secondary energy levels or orbitals that can be found in an energy level, is equal to the number of this energy level, or the order of this energy level. So, simply, the first energy level contains one secondary energy level, and the second energy level contains two secondary energy levels. The third energy level contains three secondary energy levels and the fourth contains four secondary energy levels and so on. So the four secondary energy levels are in order S, P, D, and F. So the amount of electrons carried by S is less than P, P is less than the D, and the D is less than the F. These were uh, discovered by a scientist called Zomafield by using a spectroscope of high resolution so that he uh, analyzed the spectral lines and he found that they are uh, each orbital has its own amount of energy and they are slightly different from each other and they are arranged in this order S, P, D and F so simply now we can say what letters are found in each energy level, main energy level. So the first energy level contains one subsidiary quantum number, which of course will be the first one, S. The second will contain two, S and P. The third will contain three, which will be S, P and D. And the fourth will contain four, which is S, P, D, and F and so on so these are the secondary orbital we said that the main energy level contains secondary orbitals now each secondary orbital has um, a number of orbitals around this orbit the number of these orbitals is referred to as magnetic quantum number. So the magnetic quantum number we refer to this as a small m. Now as a maximum for an orbital to contain some orbits around it the s sublevel the S sublevel contains one circular orbit. One circular orbit. The B sublevel contains three orbitals. Three orbitals in the 3D space so that we have the 
let's do this like the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis, we have an orbit in the y axis, and its shape is like a dumbbell. The dumbbell's shape is like infinity, like that. So, this is uh, the p y, we refer to as y, and the one on the x axis is the p x and the one at the z axis is the p z so we got here 3 now the s contains a 1 the b contains a 3 it's like a pattern of odd numbers the d level contains 5 orbitals and the f level contains seven orbitals. Now it gets more complex as we uh, move from the S to the P, then D, then the F. We have one, three, five, and seven. So the shapes of the D and the F orbitals are complex. So this is the magnetic quantum number. Now the uh, principal quantum number, the subsidiary quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, all of these numbers express um, the number of orbitals. So in order we have the principal quantum number, then the subsidiary quantum number, then the magnetic quantum number. So let's take a, an energy level, for example, the second energy level. The second energy level, its principal quantum number is 2. Its subsidiary quantum number is also 2. And it contains the S and the P. 1, then 2. And the magnetic quantum number is the number of, of orbitals under these sublevels. So let's see the magnetic quantum numbers equals what? For the S, we have one orbit, one orbital, sorry, and for the P, we have three orbitals. So the magnetic quantum number M equals four. One plus three equals four. So remains the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number deals with the electron itself. Now we reach the place where the electron is found. The, the orbital under the sublevel under the main energy level. We refer to the spin quantum number as m s small. So, now we are talking inside an orbit. Inside an orbit, the maximum number of uh, electrons that an orbital can take is 2. So, the S quantum number contains one orbital, so the maximum number of electrons that it can take is 2. The P quantum number, the P sublevel, contains three orbitals, the PX, the PY, and the PZ. So the maximum number of electrons it can take is 2 multiplied by 3 equals 6. The D, here we have 5, so 2 multiplied by 5 equals 10. F is 2 multiplied by 7 equals 14. So now we are talking about one orbital. If one orbital contains two electrons, we are talking about the way of rotation of these electrons. So this is an orbital and we have an electron here and another one there. If these electrons have the same rotation direction, they will repel. They will repel. But each electron has its rotation direction. The other one rotates clockwise. So the arrow upwards notes to the rotation clockwise in the direction of the clock and 
the other arrow downwards notes to the rotation of the electron anti-clockwise, anti the direction of the clock. So now we know that in each sublevel there are orbitals, in each orbit there is a maximum of two electrons. And we can refer to these two electrons as one like that and another one downwards. So let's express this. For example, in the S sublevel, we have one orbital. So inside this orbital, we'll have two electrons one upwards and one downwards. While in the P sublevel, we have three orbitals the X, Y, and Z. So, the maximum number of electrons will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and so on. So, this is the spin quantum number. Um, these are the quantum numbers. We have finished talking about them. And the next time, we will know the relationship between all of these quantum numbers and how can we distribute the electrons inside an atom by using our knowledge about the quantum numbers. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you.